In Romans, the, uh, the fourth chapter and the 24th verse, Romans 4.24 says, For us it shall be imputed, talking about righteousness, being right with God, will be imputed if we believe on Him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. If is a qualifier. If we believe on Him. Verse 25 says, He was who was delivered for our offenses. How many know He didn't go to the cross for anything He did? It was for our mistakes and sins and failures. He was delivered for our offenses and just as much for our sake, He was raised again for our justification. The resurrection was not for Jesus' sake. This is something we need to get a hold of. He, he didn't go to the cross for His own sake. And therefore, the following, the results of it, needing to be raised from the dead, was not for his own sake. It was for ours. He went to the cross for you, and he was raised for you. The resurrection is for us. Do you believe it, saints? In uh, the 10th chapter, this is in Romans, just a few pages over, 10 verse 8. They'll put it on the screen for us. He says, what says it? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart, the word of faith which we preach, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, or Jesus is Lord, and you shall believe in your heart, what? That God has raised him, Jesus, from the dead you shall be saved. What must you believe? That God has raised Jesus from the dead. This is describing the new birth, being born again, being saved. This is essential to being saved, essential to being born again. You cannot be without it. In uh, Romans uh, 1, it says in verse 3, concerning His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and He was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The proof that Jesus is the Son of God is the resurrection. That's the proof. That's the, it was, it's demonstrated in power, declared to be the Son of God by the resurrection of the dead. Now there are a number of people in the world, in this state, in this country, that would see this children's production and to them it's just like a play out of any other literary work or fairy tale. It's just some fun play. They don't believe it. There are many who would say, well, there's no way that anybody raised from the dead. That's impossible. So since it's impossible, it didn't happen with Jesus. It's never happened. And then you got others that'll say, well, I don't know whether it did or didn't. That's not really maybe the main thing. The main thing is that you believe in Jesus' teachings. And you believe that that's what makes you a Christian. But that's not true. That is not true. In 1 Corinthians 15, if you haven't read it, we won't take the time. But the entire chapter describes what we're talking about right now. And, and I'm going to just sum it up and paraphrase it. He said, if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, then we are of all, Christians are of all men most miserable. He, he basically is saying, no, there is no life after death. There is no Christianity. There is no church. If Jesus didn't raise from the dead, 
The Bible is a man-made book of fiction. There is no life after death. There is no church. And you ought never go to another church service again. Just a bunch of junk. It's a lie. If he didn't raise from the dead, oh, but if he did, <laughs> if he did, it changes everything. Oh, somebody can help me in here. If, if he did, if Jesus really did go to the cross, if he really was dead for days, and if God is real, creator of heavens and earth, and if his power came into that tomb on the third day, hallelujah, and went through Jesus' body and changed it and raised him from the dead, it changes everything. I said it changes everything. If that happened, it is the greatest thing that has ever happened. In all the history of mankind. And it is the complete salvation of every generation of human being. And there's folks that say, well, I, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. I, I'm sorry. It just sounds too fantastical. I, I, I can't believe it. That's not true that you can't believe it. The, the accurate way would be to say, you choose not to believe it. By, by virtue of what faith is, you can believe anything you choose to believe. Believe. It's a choice. It's a choice. I'm glad that some years ago, the Lord helped me to make the right choice. Amen. I have chosen, and I'm fully persuaded. Yes. Well, you, you would think so. Doing what we're doing. Right? But I am convinced that he did raise from the dead. And one of the reasons I'm so sure, I've talked to him since then. Hallelujah. He is real. You can somebody said you the, the, that preacher is off. He he thinks he's talking to God. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And you need to too. He's your creator. He gives you life and breath. In a few more days, you're going to slip out of this life. Something's going to happen to you. You're going to go one place or the other, according to the Bible. Thank God you can believe on him. You can confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. You can believe that he went to the cross, that he took your offenses and sins and was punished for them and died. Yes. Oh, but that God the Father has raised him from the dead by the glorious Holy Spirit. And that not only was he raised from the dead, but like the scriptures say, he ascended up on high and is set down of the right hand at the right hand of majesty where he ever lives to make intercession for you. And again, why, was he, why did he go to the cross? For our offenses and sins and mistakes. Why was he raised from the dead? For me. For you. Can you say amen? amen? Go to, well, on Colossians 2, they'll put it on the screen for you. If you got your Bible, you can look at it. But Colossians 2 and 12. Hallelujah. You got time for this? Yes. Did it happen? Yes. Did it really yes. happen? Not just a tale, no. not just a story. It happened. Amen. Hallelujah. And if he raised from the dead, what does the Bible tell you is going to happen next? Where? We. <laughs> is it true? We are going to get raised from the dead. Colossians 2 and 12 says, Buried with him in baptism, 
wherein also you were risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. That's what water baptism is all about. It's a picture. When you go down under the water, it's a picture of death and burial. You're identifying with him. You died with him. If you hadn't been baptized, you need to be baptized. It's a public declaration and demonstration of your personal faith and identification with Christ. He hung on the cross publicly for you. Is that right? You ought to publicly stand up and identify with him. Down into the water represents down into death and burial and the grave. But you don't stay there. I said, but you don't stay there. Up from the grave, he arose, and here you come. Hallelujah. Buried with him and risen with him. He goes on to say, you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, say it out loud. This, If you hadn't done it before, this is the perfect opportunity. If you can't do it here, I don't know where you could do it. <laughs> say it out loud. I have been buried with him. I have been raised with him. Hallelujah. 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 I'm in him. He's in me. And my future is sure. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 15, that's the one I was referring to just a few moments ago, and it would, it would be good for us to take time to read the whole chapter. But for time's sake, we won't. But uh, it's talking about the resurrection. Resurrection is all through the New Testament. It's the central part of it. If you take that away, you don't have the gospel. You don't have salvation. Believing in the resurrection is not optional. If you don't believe in the bodily, physical resurrection of Jesus, you are not a Christian. Did you hear me? Just that simple. Some things you can believe or not believe and still be saved. And, you know, maybe you don't believe in healing. Maybe you don't believe in speaking in tongues. Maybe you don't believe in prosperity. Maybe you don't believe. It it, makes it hard on you in this life. But you can, you, a lot of stuff you don't, you, if you don't believe, you'll still be saved. That's right. If you believe in Jesus and you believe that God has raised him from the dead. He, and he's talking about that and he talks about what's going to happen. He said, verse 20, 1 Corinthians 15, 20. Now is Christ risen from the dead. How many believe it? Yep. He's become the first fruits of of them that slept. Oh, that's shouting ground. That means he's not the only one. He's the first one. He's the first one. Who's the rest? I'm looking at some of them. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule, all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. There is coming a time when death will be no more. We've never been in a world like that. The world we live in Everything dies. Flowers die, trees die, animals die, our bodies die. That's the way it is. Has been generation after generation. But if you believe the Bible, there's coming a time. Anybody read in the book of Revelation? There's coming a time the Lord is going to recreate. The Bible said this earth, the elements of it are going to melt with fervent heat. Something's going to happen to our sun. Our star. And the elements, somebody said, you believe in global warming? I go further than that. (laughs) I believe in global melting. (laughs) 
<laughs> because the curse has messed this up so much, it's so full of death, the Lord is not going to try to fix it, He's replacing it. And there will be new heavens. Oh, yeah. Do y'all believe this? If you do, it does something for you. New heavens and new earth. And the Bible said in the new heavens and new earth is no curse. We've never been in a place like that. No curse. No curse. In a place where there's no curse, Isaiah describes it that the lion lies down with the lamb and becomes a vegetarian. That's right, he eats straw. Animals no longer rip each other apart. There are no, no thorns to stick on your feet. There's no hurricanes or tornadoes or earthquakes. It's never too hot. It's never too cold. No, he's just right. And... There is no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, no more dying, no more dying. For us believers, this is as bad as it gets. This is the worst it will ever be. Once we get out of here, oh, happy day. Oh, Happy day. Woo! And it's all because he's been raised from the dead. It's all because of that. Oh, hallelujah. I'd have got up and preached this to myself today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 35. Some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Verse 36, this is how you answer these pseudo-intellectuals. <laughs> Mr. T had to quote long time ago. <laughs> Fool! <laughs> I'm reading the Bible. Yeah. Fool! <laughs> <laughs> There are a lot of people who think they are so smart that are pitifully ignorant. The Bible said the fool has said in his heart there is no God. That is the epitome of being a fool is that you say there's no God. People say, well, we're people of science. We believe in the Big Bang. We believe in, in evolution. That's not science. It's a belief. You believe everything is self-generated. It created itself. There was nothing, and then nothing just created something. Itself. That's not science. That's a belief. I said, that's a belief. Maybe there was a Big Bang. There was a lot of big something. When God said, when God said, let there be. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let people mess with you I and mean, calling stuff science. Look for a key word. Theory. Yes, yes. Everybody say theory. theory. If you hear the word theory, you know what it means? It is unproven. Right. It's somebody's idea. Actually, my father in the faith, Kenneth Hagin, had a definition for theory. He said it is a supposition based upon ignorance of the topic under discussion. Yeah. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be a theory. <laughs> Notice how many of these things people are so big on and actually teach for fact. And teach as science begins with that word theory. theory. That means it's not, it's, it's not science. It's a belief and a wrong one. <laughs> Did I lose somebody? <laughs> Some will say, that's preposterous, the dead being raised. Fool, <laughs> that which you sow is not quickened except it die. He's saying, fool, you see it every day. Everything you eat, you planted a seed, it died, and then what happened? 
Something came out of it. It bloomed. It blossomed. It brought forth something greater. He said, that's the way death is. Every time we plant a body of a Christian in the ground, that's exactly how we ought to see it. We're planting a seed. This is not the end of this. He said, that which you sow, you sow not the body that will be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat, some other grain. God gives it a body as it has pleased him. To every seed his body. All flesh is not the same flesh. Now this does away with evolution. That's right. Because people will tell you, we all evolved from the same thing. It was from the goo to the zoo to you. <laughs> Single cell to you is all the same stuff. The Bible said it is not the same stuff. There's, all flesh is not the same flesh. There's one kind of flesh of men, one kind of beast, another of fishes, another of birds. What does that mean? A bird has never evolved into a man right. or a fish. It may develop, but it'll still be a bird. Right. It may change and adapt, but it's not gonna, a fish is not going to become a bird. And an and, and animal's not going to become a man. Uh, keep reading. There are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one. The glory of the terrestrial is another. There's the glory of the sun, the glory of the moon, the glory of the stars. One star differs from another in glory. That's the way. So also is the resurrection of the dead is sown in corruption. It's raised in incorruption. It's sown in dishonor. It's raised in glory. It's sown in weakness. It's raised in power. You had the funeral service with tears, but when the trump sounds, oh, it's going to all be forgotten. It's sown a natural body. It's raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body, there is a spiritual body. In John, he talks about the children of the resurrection cannot die anymore. Amen. Revelation talks about those that are raised in, in the, the, the first resurrection, the second death has no power over them. Praise Us believers, we can only die one time. Amen. A lot of people say, well, that's, nobody can die. No, the Bible talks about more. We get through this life and we experience death one time, which is not as awful as the enemy makes it out to be. You slip out of your body. It's called the departure. It's like catching a plane to somewhere else. All right. All right. <laughs> the dearly departed <laughs> is an accurate phrase. Right. You left here and went somewhere else, but you'll never die again. Nope. Hallelujah. You'll live forever beyond that. And he goes on to say, it is written, verse 45, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Hallelujah. Skip down to verse 51. He said, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Come on, say it out loud. We will all, we will all be, changed. be changed. It's going to happen quick. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Show me a twinkling of an eye. <laughs> At the last trump, the trumpet shall sound. Is it going to really happen? Is it going to really happen? Huh? Will everybody hear this thing? Oh, yes, they will. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. No matter how long that body's been there, even if it's completely decomposed, even if the body of the believer uh, died out in the desert uh, 900 years ago, and uh, uh, the particles have been blown to the four winds, uh, the corners of the earth, God knows where everyone is. And when the, it's going to be something if you're alive and remain. Uh, when the trumpet sounds, you're going to be excited. And the first thing that's going to happen, the Bible says, the dead in Christ are going to rise. And if somebody's body was scattered all over the place, it's going to come back together. And the glory of God is going to come over it. And the mortal will become immortal. The corruptible will become incorruptible. Never again subject to weakness or decay. Never get another wrinkle. 
Never get gray hair or lose your hair. Never have achy bones or joints. Can you imagine? Every day you feel amazing. Every day you just are wonderful. You, you, you get tired of asking people how they're doing because you get the same answer everywhere you go. How you doing? You know how I'm doing. Same as you. Off the chart. How am I doing? We all doing the same around here. <laughs> 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. Oh, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? He said, verse 54, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death is a temporary thing. It's a temporary thing. Death is swallowed up in victory. And you can hear the Spirit of God through Paul just gets sassy. And we need to have this in our heart and mind, especially when people leave this life. We need to have this in our forefront and thinking. He said, verse 55, oh death. Where's your sting? Come on, help me out. Come on, come, put, put a hand on your hip. <laughs> death. Yeah. Where's your sting? Where's your sting? Oh grave, oh, grave. Where's, your where's your victory? See, you need to get some sass about you. You need to get some. The fear of death makes you subject to bondage. It puts you in bondage. But when you're the truth, makes you free. And you, you can get bold and you can say, death, you ain't got no bite. Death, you ain't, you ain't bad. You think you're so bad? You ain't bad. Jesus has defeated you. Jesus has conquered death. And if he conquered death, he didn't do it for himself. He did it for me. If he's raised from the dead, I will raise from the dead. Every believer will raise from the dead. Death, where is your sting? The grave, where is your victory? There is no final victory. In the grave. Never think, never sob and cry when loved ones go home to be with the Lord like this is the end, like death has won, like death is this awful champion over life. You hear, you know, poets, you hear writers, you hear all these folks wax eloquent talking about the inevitability of the blackness and the end of everything and the emptiness of the meaning of life because you're about to die anyway. These are unenlightened. Well, Mr. T said it. <laughs> but uh, listen in closing to 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Put it on the screen for us, please. 1 Thessalonians 4.13. The reason people say such things is because of ignorance. Not necessarily lack of intelligence, but ignorance. Ignorance just means you don't know something. He said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. He's talking about body sleep. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. We're not supposed to grieve like the world grieves. We're not supposed to be incapacitated year after year, can't get on with our lives. You don't ever say, I just couldn't live without them. I don't know how I would make it without them. You may need to make it for a little while. Hmm? Did I lose somebody? Oh, I don't think they could make it without me. They don't need to be dependent on you to that degree. Wean them off of you onto the Holy Spirit. If God's got a big enough place in your heart, you can make it. I didn't say you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't feel it. You wouldn't miss them sometimes. You might not shed a few tears. But if God's big enough in you with you and him, you can make it. He's the one that puts you over. He said, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you? I want to see a show of hands. I want to see. If we, if we believe... Somebody say, I believe, I believe that, Jesus died. that Jesus died. I believe, I believe 
that Jesus rose again. If you believe that, you need to believe the rest of the verse. If you believe that, even so, them also which sleep, their bodies are in the grave, body sleep he's talking about, in Jesus will God bring with him. When the trumpet sounds, when he comes back, if you're still alive, you're going to look up, guess who's with him? Yeah. Granny. <laughs> <laughs> Granny and uncle and great grandpa and all of them. You believe it or not? Yeah. They're going to come with him. God's going to bring them with him. Keep going. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. So there's going to be a group that's still alive on the earth. And they'll, they'll never die. Even one time physically. They miss out on that. <laughs> I'd pass. How about you? I'd, I'd pass on it. We which are alive and remain shall unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent. Now that word could be translated precede. We will not go before them which are asleep. They get quickened first before us, then us. And we get to see it, if we're still alive, in our mortal form. We're going to be standing there with our mouths open. People coming out of the graves everywhere. <laughs> Bodies coming back together. The glory of God hitting them and them becoming incorruptible and immortal. And they're coming back. They are with Jesus and their bodies are down here. They get raised. They get changed and they intercept. <laughs> they slip back in their bodies and all of us are going, whoa. Whoa. Whoa, and just about time we're going, whoa, it hits us. That power hits us. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And I'm telling you, everybody's going to hear it. And the voice of the archangel, the chief angel, and with the trump of God. How many believe God's trumpet is loud and it sounds good? And the dead in Christ shall rise first. For then, then we, oh somebody say we, 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 we which are alive and remain, you're going to feel this power like a magnet that would draw another piece of metal and up off the ground you will go, shoo, you always wanted to fly. You, you always wanted to fly, whoo, just like a big magnet pulling you up off the ground. Here you go, up to get caught up. Somebody say caught up, caught up. <laughs> caught up together with them in the clouds and you will meet them and the Lord in the air. We won't wait till they get all the way down here. We're going to meet them mid air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We will never again be separated from loved ones and family right. or the Lord if we ever, did you see that word ever? So will we ever be generation, eon after eon. Verse 18, wherefore, do what? Comfort one another with these words. When somebody goes home to be with the Lord, don't be talking about how you're going to miss them. Don't be talking about how you can't live without them. You talk about this. You need to talk about where they are, what's going on, and how soon and very soon we're going to be reunited. We're going to get rid of all this corruptible, aging, death, and pain stuff. He was raised so that we could be raised. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet, everybody. If you would just close your eyes, everybody. No looking around. If you'd say... That's me, Brother Keith. I've, I've not received him. I've not confessed him. And I've certainly not done it publicly. Would you raise your hand and let me pray with you? Would you raise your hand and take this opportunity to do what we must do to be saved? Jesus hung on the cross publicly for you. Would you stand up publicly? for him. If that's you, raise your hand, please. 
Branson, here, watching online. If you got your hand raised, or you should have raised your hand, would you step out? Come down here. Let me pray with you personally. That you're, you're saying, I, I don't care who sees and knows. I want to publicly demonstrate that Jesus is Lord. Those of you watching online, those of in Branson, those standing in the front, say this out loud with me. Father God, in fact, everybody said out loud, affirm or reaffirm your faith. Father God, I believe in you. I do believe in Jesus, your son, that he went to the cross and he paid the price for all my sins, every failure, every mistake. And I do believe you have raised him from the dead. He's alive right now. And I confess him. King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus, I receive you, Lord of my life. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible said if you do that, you are saved. You are saved. You are saved. Hallelujah. Praise God.